Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. So today we're gonna to do some practice welding, but I thought I'd show you guys this uh, welder. This is actually a brand new welder that has never been used, but it's about five or six years old and Harbor Freight actually discontinued this welder about four years ago. So this is a transformer welder, but it does do AC or DC. So it's got DC negative, DC positive, then AC both high and low, depending on what amp range you want. And then down here is the dial to put it on whatever amperage you want to do. So we're going to run some 7018 today, and we're going to run that at about 90 amps. Probably right there. And uh, it's 332nd, and we've got some quarter-inch plate to burn it on, so let's check it out. This, uh, this welder, I've been told, was never even plugged in, so we'll see how it works. So this is the Vulcan Commander 225. And it's a transformer welder, but it does do DC also. So let's fire it up. All right, so here's our E7018 rods. They're 330 seconds thick. And again, the uh, voltage that it says is between 70 and 120 amps. This will run on either DC positive or AC. And with this machine, we can run either one of those. It is set on DC positive right now. Okay, so today I've got a little uh, addition. I've got a soapstone, and what I'll do is I'll just make a straight line and try to follow that line as I'm welding. Soapstone is good because the heat from the arc will just basically evaporate in terms of talcum powder, and so it won't corrode your weld or contaminate your weld. So the other thing I've got is our little clamp. When I get ready to do our T-joints, this magnetic clamp Pretty cool, I thought. I saw it, it was on Amazon for about 20 bucks, but it can hold your T-joints up for you. So I saw it look cool. <laughs> All right, one thing with this Vulcan Commander 225 transformer arc welder is it only runs on 220 volts. So it doesn't have a 110 option like a lot of the inverter machines do. So let's fire it up. So it's not super loud or anything, but one of the reasons I think they discontinued this and got away from them is the transformer machines are not as efficient as the inverter machines. So we'll see how it goes though. The advantage of the transformer machines is they're supposed to last a whole lot longer than the inverter machines. Most people say the inverter machines work well, but they're pretty much a throwaway item when they quit working. These are supposed to be something that'll last you pretty much a lifetime. So we're ready to do some arc welding. We got the overhead door open, so we uh, don't have to breathe the fumes, and we've got we're both wearing respirators. So let's try this out. I think that looks pretty good. Of course, we got to knock the slag off of it. Uh, it's fairly uniform and it was straight. I was able to follow my soapstone line really well, so I think that's going to help a lot. And my plan today is just to run beads on this. So let's take the slag hammer and see if we can knock this off. It's hot though. <laughs> One of the nice things about 7018 is the slag does come off really well. Okay, let's try a little wire brush action. Again, this is on DC positive, so that worked pretty well. Let me uh, make another line here, and we'll try another beam. I didn't know how that line would show up, and it actually showed up really well. 
Carl, we'll see you about another. One thing that people pointed out, I was using the MIG pliers to knock the flux off the end of this. They said just use your glove because you don't want to damage that flux. And it does chip off there really easily just with your glove. So, so thanks for the tip. <laughs> Too. Of course, when you grid your own welds, why, why wouldn't you always get an A? <laughs> well, this side comes off really well. I'd say that one looks better. There's a spot, this spot right there I don't like. I just went a little too fast. And I'm not trying to whip it or pause it or anything like that. I'm just simply running a straight line. I think I'll go right between those two welds. A lot of times what people do is they'll put one straight line then they'll just keep running the beads in beside the, the line that was there before. But this is how I'm doing it. Okay, so I couldn't get the arc to fire back up that time. Let's clean this off really well. Maybe it's just building up. Oh, as far as I'm going to burn that one. <laughs> okay, and on that one, because I only got halfway across the plate, what I've seen on some of the other videos is if you start off that weld, bring it back to the weld, and then start across. So that's what I'm going to try to do to restart this arc. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, and I think that's a pretty nice looking arc. So we've been playing around a little bit with this on DC positive. Let's switch it to AC and just see the difference. Anytime you change the settings on a machine, it says you're supposed to turn them off. So we'll turn it off and we'll go some, from DC positive to AC. Uh, it looks like it will be at low because we're going to go, we're going to stay on our 90 amps. And so AC low is from 40 to 170. High is 150 to 225. So we'll go to AC low. And then all we need to do is turn it back on. And actually now we're on this graph. So to stay at 90, we've got to turn it down just a little bit. 90 DC is 130 AC on these settings. So we'll turn it, we're back at 90 amps, but we're on AC uh, low now. And the other thing with this is this thing, the reason I call these buzz boxes 
these transformer machines, when they're running on AC, they make a distinctive buzz. So we'll see if we can hear that and uh, check it out. So let's try and run a bead on AC. care for AC welding. <laughs> um, Houston, I think we've had a problem. Yeah, the DC <laughs> is a lot easier, which is, that's probably another major reason people use the DC uh, inverter machines more. All right, let's turn that back to DC and keep welding some practice because I'm not good at AC. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that definitely doesn't look right. And that's super hot, so don't, <laughs> yeah, don't grab hold of it. I ain't touching it. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back to DC positive. We'll go back to our 90 amps. That seemed to work pretty good. Let's clean up this mess. <laughs> <laughs> I got the arc going a couple times, but it was like, I, I didn't feel like I had really any control. And it was, I mean, it's, you can just see it's just a mess. So, <laughs> the only thing I managed to weld was the rod to the <laughs> to the piece. Excellent weld on that part. Right. <laughs> Watch yourself. <laughs> that is still smoking hot. Well, all right. Let me take my wire wheel buzz that off. Yeah, we'll definitely be practicing just with the uh, DC. This thing's still smoking hot. There's about a half inch in there of that AC uh, with that 7018. It doesn't look bad. The rest of it is complete and utter garbage. <laughs> so, but did you hear the, the kind of buzzing, popping uh, noise that that machine made while it was on AC? That's why they called those old machines buzz boxes. And uh, one of the things that I've been told too is like all the old farmers and stuff around here, they use 6013 with those AC machines pretty regularly. I guess that's an easier rod to deal with and uh, on those AC machines. This 7018, I, I'm pretty happy with the way it's running as long as it's on DC positive. All right, we are back on DC positive. We're back on 90 amps and I went ahead and made another line. I'm gonna do one more line, just a, a straight weld on this, just to kind of redeem myself uh, because that, uh, that AC attempt was uh, definitely humbling. Again, I'm not a professional welder at all and uh, just a hobbyist welder, just trying to learn it. I've decided though, I'm gonna try to concentrate on stick for a while and get decent at that because I've got a couple projects I'm gonna have to use some stick welding. So, we'll see how it goes. be the best yet which is nice because after being so thoroughly humbled <laughs> trying to weld AC you always want to end on a positive note so we'll see if this slide will pop off here look at that
if you have to beat the heck out of your weld to get the slag off, at least with 7018, you probably did something wrong. I like that a lot. I kind of went on top of that other weld, but that is the same length or same width, about the same height the whole way through, and I think that looks pretty good. So let's set up a T-joint, see what we can do with it. Okay, and on this one, I kind of want to practice uh, and use my little grasshopper clamp as much as anything. So I'll start on this by putting a tack on each end, and then we'll run a stringer. Okay, there's a good tack. Try to get one in. Well, the tacks look fairly good. We'll see if we can run a stringer. You know, we got to knock the slag off of it. But it don't look horrible from here. I think, I'm going to guess that maybe 90 amps might be a little high for you. It's not too bad. It, right here, I have a good pointer, but right there, it could have been better. It didn't fill in as good. Let's try the other side. Okay, so there is where you should do a practice movement with your hand. I got down here, I couldn't reach it anymore, and I was, you know, I was trying to reach in there, so I said this, uh, I should have run kind of a practice think about how that was going to go. Let me grab another rod and we'll finish that out. bad at all okay so our last stringer i think looks pretty darn good so for me anyway the only one that was super ugly was the one we tried with the ac and uh i won't be using ac i don't think <laughs> not when i've got dc welders and you know actually right now every used site is full of those old bugs buzz boxes and this vulcan commander 225 is basically just a newer version of them. It does have the DC, and so that's good, but you can pick these things up for, I mean, 200 bucks, should be able to buy these all day long. When this sold at Harbor Freight, they sold for about 400 bucks. So, decent welder. You know, like I said, if you're good with an AC welder, it works, and it does have DC capabilities. So, like I said, not bad at all, but the inverter welders, they're popular for a reason. So, hope you liked the video. Uh, I'm not at all ashamed of that weld right there. I think it came out pretty good. There's the back side, not quite as good. This was the first side I did. This was the second side. So, and like I said, these welds, what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna keep concentrating as a hobbyist welder. I'm gonna keep concentrating on stick welding and I'll probably only use DC positive and I'll probably use a inverter machine a lot more. That machine weighs 145 pounds my inverter machine that i bought brand new off amazon for 150 dollars uh it weighs like i mean it's under 20 pounds so huge difference in uh, being able to use them uh the nice thing is like i said you know with the 220 i think it gets a little better bite and penetration on these so i've welded everything i've done so far with that inverter machine's been on 110 and uh i think the 220 is going to help it out a lot so again hobbyist welder but if you like the video drop a like and we definitely invite you to subscribe to see more. Have a great day and be safe.